welcome everyone and congratulations on sticking with us through the last eight months of 23 Research Data Things, the 2016 program. So unbelievably here we are eight months after we started at the end of the program. I can't believe how quickly the time has flown and um, how much interest we've had in this program over the last eight months. So congratulations to everybody who stuck with us this far. Um, and really pleased you could make it along to our final webinar today. This is our very last catch-up webinar and your opportunity to share with us uh, what you plan to do next in a post-23 things world. If you have thoughts, even really early thoughts, on your next steps, whether it's for your own personal professional development or implementing something new in your organisation, please tweet them to our 23 Things um, Twitter stream or put a note in the question pod if um, you've got something there that you'd like to share and we may have time later to come back and, and chat to a few people about their plans for the future. So we're really keen to know what people are thinking about doing next. And we have some great speakers today lined up that hopefully will just give you some ideas about what your plans might be um, after the 23 Things program. But before we sort of look forward, let's take a few moments just to look back at our final few things that we've done since we met back in September. So since that time, we've progressed through things 21, 22 and 23. Thing 21 um, proved to be something of a hit, really, because I think we've all hit snags with dirty data and thing 21 showed us why dirty data is such a problem in the research community and also gave us a chance to use some of the practical tools available for data cleansing. And those that tackled the Challenge Me stream loved the Open Refine tool um, and I expect we've probably inspired a few people to think about expanding their knowledge of Open Refine and other tools through one of the library or, uh, library or data carpentry courses. Um, that we also heard about earlier in the program. Um, thing 22 was our attempt to help you wade through the acronym soup of key players in the research data management space in Australia. And those of you who attended some of our Sprint to the Finish workshops might recall playing the snakes and ladders game, which was another way of learning about um, who's who in the research data management zoo. And Thing22 also gave us the opportunity to glimpse into the amazing world of big data with insights into uh, the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder and the Data Cube, which are two fascinating uh, research initiatives here in Australia that are, are dealing with seriously big data. And finally, uh, Thing23 brought us lots of options for continuing our research data management journey courses, newsletters, workshops, webinars, something for everyone who wants to keep learning and exploring the world of research data. That's a really nice segue, I guess, to um, introduce the first of our guest speakers today, who is uh, Dr. Mary Ann Kennan. Uh, Mary Ann is a senior lecturer in the School of Information Studies at Charles Sturt Uni, uh, where she is high degree by research coordinator. And Research Data Manager is one of her areas of teaching. And Mary Ann's here today to give us a brief overview of the new Graduate Certificate in Data Management course that's going to be offered at Charles Sturt Uni next year. So for anybody who's thinking about um, a formal qualification uh, in this space, this is a great opportunity to hear about one of the options um, it, that has been included in Thing 23, but here's an opportunity to uh, hear a bit more about it from the convener. Hello everyone um, and thanks to uh, Jerry and uh, the other people from ANS for inviting me along here. I just was going to talk a little bit about our um, new graduate certificate which we're offering next year. Um, so uh, last year I went and interviewed of quite a few people who were actually working or employing people in data management types of roles and um, they talked about the importance um, of uh, having a qualification available to people and they were talking about the kinds of roles that you can see in the slides on the screen. So um, it takes a bit of time to get a course up 
through a university. So uh, the first we were able to do is at a graduate certificate level. And so uh, we are offering the subjects that you can now see on the screen. These were also in the 22 things. Um, I can have a few questions about them if people have any. But so the first subject um, is an introduction. It will cover some of what you've covered in the 22 things, but hopefully at a slightly deeper um, level. And um, then we're going to talk about, we've got another subject on data curation, and both of those subjects will be offered in first semester. And then um, we have an introduction to tools and analytics and a couple of electives at the moment which are offered in second semester. You can either do two of the subjects um, each semester or one each semester depending on your other other commitments. Um, we chose these subjects because um, uh, these were the ones that, um, that the areas that uh, the people that I interviewed last year talked about as being the critical ones for people to know about. In the data curation subject, there'll be a couple of units um, on uh, metadata as well as the um, traditional curation subjects. Some people have asked about admissions requirements. Uh, for the graduate certificate, um, you just really need a degree in information or any related discipline. Uh, and at CSU, if you're working in an area um, where you have a requirement to work with data, that will be considered um, an entry requirement. And we're also adding the, the four subjects that you saw before um, to our Master of Information Studies as one of the um, electives, uh, specialisations. So you can do a Master of Information Studies and you do the core part of the um, course and get your you know, certification with ALIA if you're a librarian and um, in, uh, RIMPA uh, for Records and Information Management. And then if you wish to do a specialisation, um, data management and what you saw before is there as an option for the final four subjects. In the, um, that's it for the slides, but you can see the links there um, which will take you to the courses uh, and there's a button in there if uh, people are interested in finding more information or enrolling. In ANS, I also link, I did do a survey last year of the data types of subjects um, that are offered at other universities and so um, most of them are around the sort of analytics and um, data science, uh, IT kind of um, area. And so ours is offering a bit of an alternative to that. But if those are your interests, then I suggest you click on that link um, with the caveat that I collected that, that information last year. But those were the things that were offered. Um, that's probably enough from me. I should have put my uh, contact details up there. Um, I didn't, but uh, if you just Google um, Charles Sturt University School of Nation Studies and Kennan, uh, I'll come up and I'd be happy to um, email or telephone or whatever communication style suits you uh, with anyone who's got any questions, comments. Okay. Thanks. And there is just one question already from one of our colleagues over in New Zealand uh, wondering whether that course would be appropriate for somebody that's not based in Australia. Uh, that's a really good question and um, we have tried to, we, well because um, some of the work is around, um, you know, governance and uh, rules and, you know, regulations and so on, it is at the moment um, a bit focused on Australia, but we have tried to make it international. We're getting a couple of people who are internationally based to, to take a look at it as we develop the subject. So hopefully, uh, yes, yeah, certainly the data curation, it doesn't matter where you are and the visualisation, I mean the tools and techniques similarly so. But the first one uh, we need, we're working on getting some international stuff in the sort of governance and so on areas as well. Excellent. And somebody has asked, Julie, uh, Julie Gardner has asked if you already have a graduate diploma, can you still do this 
graduate certificate. If you have a graduate diploma, is that mm. the, sorry you broke up a bit. Well, if, if your graduate diploma is in information studies or a related discipline, you could do the um, data management as a specialisation and convert that graduate diploma to a master's or you could do the graduate certificate, yeah. There's no limit on the number of graduate certificates that you have uh, and we give pretty good credit for um, people who've already got graduate diplomas to segue into the masters. So it sounds like there's a fair bit of flexibility there for people who are interested in um, pursuing this option um, and um, you know, for people who are keen for a career in this space, this is certainly worth um, considering. Um, so thank you, Marianne. That's all the questions we seem to have for now. So we'll move on, but we, if we've got time, we can come back to more questions later. As I mentioned before, I know Marianne's very happy to um, take questions offline as well. So thank you, Marianne. Um, Thanks, Jerry. Uh, so next up today, we have uh, Aubrey Kirkpatrick. Now, Aubrey is a subject librarian um, at Victoria University of Wellington over in New Zealand where we've had a really strong group participating in 23 things, generally from New Zealand but um, in particular from Victoria University. And they've already been thinking about some of their plans for what they're going to do in their workplace um, post 23 things and uh, Aubrey kindly has agreed to share that with us. So, um, Aubrey, would you like to tell us what your plans are? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that nice introduction. Um, unfortunately, uh, Katie Wilson, who's been the head of the Victoria University of Wellington 23 Things group, is away. She's actually in Australia this most of this week, so I'm filling in for her, but I'm kind of the second hand with this because one of the hats I wear outside of um, subject librarian is research support as well. So Katie and I have been um, really heavily involved in running it here. And we were really lucky. We had a strong core group of library staff from all the different areas in the library that came to the regular meetings and followed along at their own time. And our last group meeting was just a few weeks ago. We had our a big celebration. We actually have some pictures of a beautiful cake we got made for us, um, as well as wearing our stickers very proudly. Um, but a big topic for the final um, meeting was what are we going to do in the future? And we were very lucky to have the university librarian come for the last session and she kind of threw a challenge at us as well. Um, we are just transitioning to a new institutional repository and so she was very keen for us to work together as a group and discover different ways of publicizing some library data from that repository and look at kind of interesting ways and tools that we could maybe incorporate into that. So she's kind of um, thrown her support behind an ongoing group that would look at using the knowledge that we've learned from 23 Things and putting it into action here. Um, on top of that, we also have the library strategic plan is just starting to be uh, shaped for the next few years and research support is one of the main pillars. Um, so there was a really strong call for us to look at online tools and more support towards the postgraduate students. Um, we had a research bazaar for the first time last year and we had a great uh, support of the postgraduates who are really interested in all of the different research data tools, um, are very interested to try their hand in lots of different areas and so it's just um, an untapped resource. Sometimes academics are kind of set in their ways of the processes that they do things, but we find the, the postgrads and the PhDs are really um, open and um, are great at sharing it with their, their own peers as well, so it gets out there. Um, so we'll be focusing on that group as well to maybe kind of uh, reach out to them in a more specific way, especially from the subject librarian point of view. We're definitely keen to get um, more uh, New Zealand examples in the 23 research data thing. So I know Katie as well as most of the team really wanted to get more New Zealand examples in there and so we are thinking maybe to reach out to a lot of the other different um, New Zealand research institutions and universities and maybe kind of break it up into little chunks so it's not just 
one group having to translate the whole 23 research data things for New Zealand context. Yeah, and finally, we just agreed that we're going to keep meeting. It was one of the best things in terms of getting to know what's going on from all different areas in the library. We were able to talk more with the IT team about things that they would have thought we weren't really interested in. So we've been able to have some really interesting discussions, and I think moving forward, a lot of our committees and groups for the planning um, are going to be a little more robust because more people are going to be throwing their hands up. Um, not going to be too afraid of the, the research side of things or the, the data curation. So, yeah, we're really keen on that. So, yeah. <laughs> that sounds fantastic, Aubrey. And um, I, I mean, I, I know 23 Things can't take all the credit for what is looking like to be a really um, positive move forward in this space. But let's, I hope we've helped you along your way and helped frame some of your thinking. And it's part of the joy of this program is that sort of community participation where you can pick up ideas from other places. And, um, and as you're suggesting, which I think is a really great idea, is to perhaps if you're looking to contextualise 23 things, in your case for a New Zealand audience or even for a, um, a domain specific um, audience, as in a health and medical things, the idea of actually breaking that work up and doing that collaboratively is really smart. Um, it just saves effort and you then get this pooling of ideas and resources and backgrounds. And um, something that I guess Anne's is very happy to do is be a forum through which people can share any materials that they create. So, you know, even with the New Zealand program, if you do create a 23 Things version for New Zealand, we'd be happy to put that up on our website and make it available to others in case it's useful. And uh, again, other people can adapt what's already been done. So that's a great, great outcome um, to have is that sort of collaboration going forward. And even within your own organisation, identifying more people that you can bring into the conversations and fantastic that your university librarian's behind it. That's yeah. such a bonus. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much, Aubrey. I, I really appreciate you letting us, you know, sharing your plans because um, we know there are quite a few people who have got plans going forward, but uh, we don't always know what they are. So thank you. No and um, and now. Our good friend Julie Tui from Griffith University has indicated that she's got something that she'd be happy to share about what she's planning to do next. Um, Julie, are you available to share with us now your your plans post 23 things? So from my perspective, I've been involved with two community groups. One is with Griffith University and I co-facilitate with my great colleague, Kali Poulton, and the other community group I've been involved with is with the lovely Kate LeMay from ANS and we um, have co-facilitated the health and medical data community group. So I guess um, my response today is more around the context of the later one that I'm doing with Kate. So in terms of how it is that I'm going to be moving forward, um, I've already mentioned before previously um, the fact that I'm involved with the data mapping exercise, which is really going to be useful not just for the library and e-research to find out what it is that our academic community are doing with their research data, but also to um, it's going to benefit the research group because they will be able to see how it is that their researchers are collecting their data, how they're storing it, are they making it usable, what sort of constraints and issues are, they've had around it. Because as you know, health data, uh, it comes along with other issues or constraints around privacy and consent. So um, the data mapping exercise is we eventually, we initially did a pilot of five people and we've had some findings of from that pilot and so now we're going to, it's been endorsed by the executive group, so they're going to look at rolling it out to the wider group, and that's the health group. So then they will have more information about how it is that their researchers are behaving and the library services will find out too where it is that we can possibly offer maybe newer services or in terms of library and also to e-research because we coincide within the same division which is information services. So from the health group perspective, they would be able to see exactly where it is they need to help their researchers um, moving forward in this whole conversation with research data management. Um, and 
And the other thing too, which lends itself nicely to the first project I'm involved in is the second one. Um, so recently I've commenced a 50% project and how did that happen? I, that happened basically because I, I was so involved with the Health 22 Things program. I didn't know everything I needed to know from the beginning and still at the end of it I don't, I don't know everything as well. But I've learned a lot along the way and so what I wanted to do was find out how possible I could look at in my organisation, learn more or contribute more to the conversation. So I, with my permission from my manager and director, I approached the e-research director. It's all about you know your networks that you currently have within your organisation and you have a project he was involved with um, and indicated that I would be of interest, you know, if possible, could I offer some sort of support. And so luckily for me they said yes and so now I'm working 50% on the project. This project is quite um, huge and very relevant to health data. So in a very brief snapshot, they're looking at trying to make clinical data at Griffith along with some external data from other facilities available to researchers. Um, they want the data sets to be uh, discoverable and if possible, shareable, whether, that look, whether that's de-identified or not. There are all these sorts of questions that are yet to be resolved. This is a project that's actually a three-year program of work, so it's going to take um, a lot of time and again, of course, it is health data, so there's going to be consents and privacy issues and there's going to be heavily govern governance and structures and put in place, so it is a slow-moving beast, um, but I'm very happy to be involved. Uh, do I have all the answers on what it is that I need uh, to do or do I have all the skills that I you know, required right from the beginning? Well, no, I don't. Um, but like most librarians, I'm very good at asking questions and I've developed some great networks too across the 23 Things program. So that's going to enable me to have more confidence in picking up the phone and talking to people and saying, look, I, I need to do this. So to give you an idea, I'm going to be looking at identifying some of the medical schemas that, that we might be able to use and also to looking around the data assurance and the data management side of the project as well. So again, naming conventions and security classifications, a whole heap of stuff that I still don't know a lot about yet, but um, that is my next step forward and I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have been involved with either of those projects had it not been for Anne's. So thank you, Anne's, and thank you, Jerry, and thank you, Kate. You've been a fantastic facilitator. I've learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. That's a really nice story. Thank you for, for being willing to share it because I suspect um, your experiences, like many of us, um, is that you perhaps feel like you would like to take a future step or another step forward in this space, um, but no, well, I don't know everything. But that, the reality is we're all learning as we go. Even those of us that have been working in the space for a long time, we're still learning as we go because this is a really rapidly evolved to work in, which what is what makes it so exciting. But it also means that um, learning on the job as well as doing um, perhaps some formal training as well are really mm. valid ways to start moving into this space and perhaps actually getting your hands you know, hands dirty, so to speak. And what a great opportunity you've been offered, Julie, to, to work 50% on that program. And congratulations on putting your hand up and just saying, well, I'll give it a go. You know, that's a, a great way forward. So uh, a, another nice story, I guess, you know, what we've heard today is um, a mixture of stories about what institutions are doing, what individuals are doing, and also what are, what some of the opportunities are for you know professional development, perhaps both looking around in your own organisation as Julie um, has, or um, looking at some of the courses, whether they're online courses or face-to-face -face courses, workshops, webinars, other ways of um, of uh, continuing your data journey. Uh, so thank you, Julie, for sharing that. Um, and. Uh, I guess that's a nice segue to into what Anne's going to do next because we have had quite a few people ask us what our plans are for the future and we have been thinking a bit about what we do next but we don't have, I guess, a, a firm program of activities yet for next year but what I can tell you is that um, all the materials from 23 Things will stay up on our website. The newsletter that we've been sending out fortly has come to an end, fortnightly has come to an end, um, but you can subscribe 
and news newsletter to keep up to date with what's happening in this space. We do plan to run some 23 thing type activities uh, next year, but not in the same format as this year. Um, so perhaps some short workshops, a bit like perhaps the sprint to the finish and crash courses, but uh, perhaps tackling things in a slightly different way. We also want to look at different ways of bringing IT and library folks a bit closer together. Uh, you know, we've had um, both Julie and Aubrey mentioned today, you know, that they've been cl collaborating more closely with their IT departments and we want to sort of try and reflect that a little bit more in our programs going forward. And as I mentioned before, we're keen to facilitate the sharing of any repurposing of the 23 Things materials. So please do let us know if you, you know, do um, repackage any of the materials and we would happily share them with others. So I guess in terms of what ANS is doing next, we do have some plans to follow up on 23 Things type activities, but we will be expanding on that a little bit as well. Um, to, to offer some different sorts of, of training and development opportunities in similar spaces and to perhaps, as I said, look at how we can bring library and IT communities a little closer together. And then this is probably also a nice time just to plug our feedback survey, which you can find here on our um, 23 Things homepage, uh, because that's we're really finding the feedback we're getting through that very valuable uh, in, in trying to sort of frame up what we're going to do next year. So I urge you to um, complete that if you haven't yet. So now it's time to celebrate. Uh, for those of us who have stuck with the program uh, through the whole eight months, it is really cause for celebration. It's been quite a journey um, and there's been a lot of people come along on this journey with us. Um, if you've had a look at our new celebration page, you will have seen some of these um, pictures before, but I thought them, they were well, uh, well worth sharing because we've had a lot of people engage with the program in different ways. So we know that we've got nearly 1,500 people that have subscribed to our newsletters. We know that we've had more than 3,500 of our Credly badges claimed. Um, we also know that we have had over 600 people um, join up on Meetup and lots of people have been using Meetup as a mechanism to hear what or see what others are saying. We've had 49 community groups and we've, we've heard from a few of those over the course of our webinar series and uh, in particular the health and medical community group that Julie mentioned has been quite a vibrant community uh, working in a specific domain space. We've also had amazing um, interest in the program from around the world and Natasha is going to talk to us in a moment about a bit more about that. Um, but we've had people from um, 28 countries actually can, uh, participate in the program and from some quite uh, unexpected locations such as Ethiopia and Lithuania, um, really strong groups in New Zealand of course but also groups in Canada and the US, the UK, We've really had an amazing response to 23 Things and we're really delighted that we've had people, particularly through Meetup, be able to contribute perspectives from, um, from all over the world. And as I mentioned um, earlier, Natasha um, is uh, going to speak to us a little bit now about um, her recent trip to International Data Week in Denver. Uh, International Data Week was held in September and Natasha had the opportunity to present there um, about the 23 Things program and um, I guess was perhaps a little surprised at the buzz that that um, caused around what was a huge conference. Um, so Natasha, would you like to share a bit of the excitement of around 23 Things? over in Denver. Okay, so um, yeah, so international, should I put my camp webcam on too? I suppose I should. Um, so yeah, so like Jerry said, I went to International Data Week in Colorado and most of that was held in Denver but some of it was in Boulder because it just became a really huge week of activities covering um, SciDataCon, an international data forum and the Research Data Alliance plenary. Yeah, so 838 people from 41 countries um, attended the whole of International Data Week and 
Michael Witt from Purdue University and I presented three times a double act where he talked about the 23 things libraries for research data which the Research Data Alliance has put out and I talked about the 23 research data things program that, that ANS has been running in Australia. And if you don't know, um, there is a libraries for research data interest group that is part of the Research Data Alliance and the Research Data Alliance or RDA is essentially a forum for bringing people around the world together to discuss some of the challenges and issues to do with managing data and come together forming interest groups and working groups that help to address those challenges. And one of those is of course libraries for research data because you will know having done the program that um, managing research data is a perfect fit for librarians because we are very good at managing information, we're good at working with researchers and so forth, but it can be a real challenge to know how to support them in this and to get enough information about it to feel confident to support um, research data management at, at your institution. So the Research Data Alliance um, interest group for libraries put out this 23 things libraries for research data and it's basically a one page program. They really literally have 23 things. So it's very similar to our program because actually our program was sort of built with that idea in mind in the first place. So um, that program that they put out, that one pager of tools and tricks and, and different sort of interest areas to look at has now been translated into 11 languages um, and when somebody tr translates that, they translate it, say if you're translating it into Spanish, you say, oh, I'm in Spain, I don't want a UK example, I want a Spanish example. So they, they change it just in the way that we that we just um, heard from Aubrey maybe that our ANS data 23 things might be adapted for the New Zealand context as well. <clears throat> so after Michael I talked about um, what was happening with the ANS data 23 things <clears throat> and he described it that ANS took the, the Research Data Alliance 23 things and strapped it to the back of a rocket and basically everyone was really impressed at the way that our community has come behind the 23 things in putting those things together and just in the number of people who have participated and been excited by this and the sort of statistics that we've seen are quite sort of mind-blowing around the number of community groups and just the number of cakes that you people have baked and the number of tweets and everything like that and really inspiring for other people around the world to say, well, this thing has really got legs and we could actually use that in, in our country. Country is. So this is a little shot of the um, research data libraries for interest group at uh, libraries for research data interest group at Research Data Alliance plenary, and yeah, a lot of people came up afterwards to talk to me about how it worked in Australia and how they might take that material and adapt it. So um, very exciting for Australia to actually be at the forefront of some of these discussions. So that's that's it from me, Jerry. Okay, thanks, Natasha. That was short, sharp, and shiny. <laughs> but it, 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 I guess what we often don't recognise in Australia is that uh, we're quite advanced in this space compared to many other countries and uh, I think when people, you know, Natasha's just recently had that opportunity to go overseas and, and I guess uh, be aware of how much uh, people are actually watching what we do here in Australia and are interested in what we're doing here. Um, and so we uh, anticipate that perhaps we'll see 20, a 23 things style program pop up elsewhere overseas um, and um, we'd be delighted to, to, you know, to think that that may, that may eventuate. So thank you um, Natasha for that and we just thought it would be interesting, a nice kind of way to, to wrap up the sort of celebration aspect by looking at you know what what's happening in the international community. And actually, before you disappear too far, Natasha, uh, this is probably a great opportunity to just have a look to see what's happening on our Twitter stream. Whether we've got anybody that's talking there about um, what their plans are for the future, or most likely pictures of cake. I would be <laughs> wouldn't be surprised what's what's happening. Actually, there's not a lot happening today. There was cake was was mentioned as a critical. Clearly, cake is clearly a critical aspect of 23 research data <laughs> things. That was from Stephanie Morton, and I have to agree with that. Um, judging from the number of cake photos on Twitter, um, other than that, yeah, there's just a couple of people are following along, um, but there's there's really nothing. It's just 
getting to the celebration stage now. I think people are happy to be at the end. Yes, uh, well, I, I have to agree. It is great to be at the end. Um, Feeling a sense of achievement. Yeah, absolutely. And people should feel a great sense of achievement because it is a lot, you know, it's a big commitment. 23 things is a lot of things. And what we've learned too is some people um, were doing all streams of each thing, so they actually did like 69 things. So, you know, um, well done to anybody that stayed with the program and completed. Uh, not just all things, but even just some things, because it is a commitment for sure. Has asked a question about our discussion board. We will keep the discussion boards up for a little bit longer, but we won't necessarily keep them up forever, because they do kind of reflect, I guess, the current 2016 program. But we will archive that content and make sure that we um, pull out any of the resources that have been um, uh, referred to because some people did share some really valuable resources so we will make sure that we I guess exploit that content if you like um, but we will be looking at pulling that down probably early in the new year. If you have any particular thoughts on that let us know but we did sort of figure that once we stop running the program it would probably slowly um, get a little bit quieter and that people do have the opportunity through um, the ANS data Twitter handle to keep talking and sharing um, what they're doing. We also have a Data Librarians Google group, which is another way of sharing resources and, and ideas and putting questions out to the community as well. And I'll put details of those things in, um, in the uh, final email that I'll send out once the recording of this webinar is available. Um, I'll just sort of send out a summary with some of the resources that might be of interest to people going forward. So as we do come to the end of the program, just a reminder too that um, you should think about uh, claiming the last of your Credly badges if you've been claiming the badges and also your Alia PD points um, because the 23 Things program has qualified for Alia PD points. And um, to also think about whether you should be including what you've achieved through 23 things in any of your professional development records. And one, I guess, option that we've suggested to people is to use the, the opportunity of reflecting on the 23 things program through our short survey um, to actually, I guess, reuse those same reflections for any professional development assessments that you may have where you want to actually include the 23 Things program as part of that assessment. So please think about how you can, I guess, build on what you've done uh, through the program um, and, I guess, maximise the value um, in the program for yourself. So I, the other thing I just wanted to flag was this um, celebration page that um, we've just recently put up on the 23 Things website. It really just has a few nice pictures that have come through, um, the, particularly on our Twitter handle, just some of the snippets about what people have been saying on Twitter, on Meetup, um, on blog posts. We have a fantastic um, short video that um, Katia Henry from the State Library of Queensland put together where some of the participants up there have um, reflected on their journey through the 23 Things program. Um, and we've also dropped into this page the, the Thing 23 um, activities because I guess that's where we are hoping you'll go to from here is thinking about what you're going to do next. So we've um, included that here. Um, and we've also got a space there where any presentations or papers that people are giving or writing about the program, we can share them here as well. And we've got a few up there for starters to, to get that seated. So if you are talking, writing, presenting on 23 things, we'd love to share those things with other people here too. So as we come to the end of the program, um, fitting that we thank, I guess, quite a few people and they are all named here on our celebration page, but it's a lot of people have actually made sure that this program has got up and running and continued and been well supported. 
We started off November, December last year with a call out to the community for suggestions for what we should include in the things. And all of these people in this list um, came back to us and suggested um, more than 70 things that we could include, uh, which we then massaged down into the 23 things. So a big thank you to all the people who actually got us started and helped us identify what it is that the community wants and needs to learn about research data management. We also had people that were standing by ready to take the hard questions as we went through things because here at ANS uh, and certainly the organising group for 23 Things, we're not experts on everything to do with research data. So we were definitely relying on having some expert advisors on hand to help with some of the trickier things. People like Baden Appleyard from Osgol, who was on hand and some of you will have seen, contributed um, back to questions on data licensing, for instance. Um, so a number of people there that made themselves available to be our expert advisors. We also, of course, had lots of people speak at our webinars and we really appreciate people taking the time to share their stories and um, to, I guess, share with the community what they're doing and what they've learned. So thank you to all our webinar speakers and, of course, our community group leaders. We had nearly 50 community groups. Uh, some of them were um, sort of co-run by you know, a couple of people and they were such an important part of the program in providing us with feedback on how the program was going as we went through, but also for really making that community building aspect of the program work. So a big thanks to them as well. We also need to thank Call and Alia who have supported the program along the way and um, I guess made it clear that this, this area is an area that they see as one that is very valuable and viable for the library profession going forward. And most importantly, of course, um, we need to thank you, um, all of the folks that have come along on the journey with us and stayed with us and, um, and contributed to the discussions and things like our sprints to the finish and crash courses. It's all been good fun, but it's also been a great way to learn as part of a group and to virtually, I guess, be able to support each other through the program. So thank you very much for that as well. I think there's a lot of thank yous happening on Twitter at the moment and a lot of congratulations. A lot of thanks to Anne's and congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's lovely. Well, thank you all and, as I said, thank you all for being part of the program. It's been quite a ride, um, but it's been great fun and we've learned a lot doing it with you. And we look forward to uh, having you be part of what next year brings um, with Anne's. Please keep an eye on Anne's news um, to see what's coming up next and uh, stay in touch with how things are going in your post-23 things worlds.